Welcome to The Author Show, where we present new authors and books, from fiction to self-help and everything in between, you'll find it all here. To watch the TV version of our program, visit AuthorsWebTV.com. That's AuthorsWebTV.com. And now, let the show begin. Hi, this is Linda Thompson, your host for The Author Show. For generations, the family tree records words and sing song that wind deep in its core. Children playing in or around the tree may accidentally sever or uproot disturbing moments hidden in their outback. That's the first two sentences in the introduction of Mark Wayne Adams' new book, Outback, Brothers and Sinisters. I don't know about you, but this new work of young adult fiction has me intrigued. Mark joins us today to talk more about Outback, so let's get started. Mark, welcome to The Author's Show. Thank you, Linda. It's a great honor to be on the show. Mark, please give our listeners a quick overview of Outback, Brothers and Sinisters. Well, the overview of this book is it is a story geared toward juvenile fiction to young adult. It is a coming-of-age story, and as a kid... My parents would always tell me to play out back. And as a public speaker, I've interviewed numerous kids, and I ask them if their parents allow them to play out back or out front. And they always say that they play out back because it's safer. For me, I grew up in western Kentucky, and out back was thousands of acres of forest. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't the safest place to play. <laughs> so inside this book, a cousin of mine inspired me by saying we should write a story called bothers and sinisters about all the horrible things that happened out back that our parents didn't know about. So this story is a story about a young boy. He is turning 11 years old. His parents have moved from Florida to Kentucky, and he is playing on this dilapidated farm out back, and he uncovers his family tree there. Very interesting. I love some of the analogies you do because when I saw Outback, I immediately thought of Australia because when my parents talked about playing outside, it was out in the backyard. So that's basically what you're saying. I have to wonder, though, if your parents were trying to tell you something when they sent you out into the woods. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, They were always telling me something. (laughs) My mom said I was a borderline liar or creative storyteller. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Well, you classify Outback as young adult fiction. Is there a particular age group you had in mind while you were writing? The age group that I wanted to reach, this is an eight-book series. And the main character, his name is Drew, and this is his life story. So we start the book off, similar to Star Wars, in the middle of his story, because this is the most important moment in his life. And we start there, and he goes up to freshman year of high school, and I will not disrupt the story or give away anything, but it is like Star Wars, so once you get to a point, you have to go back. Well, I understand you are a multi-talented author of many children's books. How would you describe your writing style? My writing style is inspired by family, and the reason I choose family is those are the characters I know the, the best. It's also uh, inspiring to me to remember them perpetually through writing. It may not be their exact personality, but it's the personality that I see when I see that person. And all of us create our own worlds, and we view people a certain way because we only know the things that are in front of us. And that's why I like to write these stories and use my family as inspiration is because I see them as a certain character that they may not see themselves. Well, another of your talents is that of illustrator. Did you create the illustration for your book cover? Yes, I did create the illustrations for my book cover, and this will actually be an illustrated novel. I wanted to release the novel first as a standalone story just to make sure that my writing was up to par with all of my friends. I also wanted to release it as an illustrated novel because some readers enjoy words and the way words inspire them, and then some other readers like pictures. For example, I'm a picture guy. As an illustrator, I see the world through pictures. If you say a word, I envision an image inside my head. So I wanted this book to be for both types of readers. When you talk about their outback, are you talking about the fantasy worlds that kids create with their friends? Exactly. So my outback is different from your outback. But if we play in the same outback, we have a lot of similarities. And 
that's the reason I chose Outback, because inside this book, Julia, his best friend who he meets in the Outback, they were both playing together, and her family is originally from Australia. So she's using Australian vocabulary inside this book, and Drew is adapting and adopting parts of her Outback into his own. And inside this book, I've actually included an Australian vocabulary section in the back so that readers, as they read this series, will actually learn all of the Australian Outback slang, all the legal Outback slang. <laughs> <laughs> I may have to get a copy just for that. <laughs> if you were writing an article about Outback, what would your headline be? Probably meet you in my Outback. It's a tough description because I think... This book will mean so much to so many different people. I have um, a lot of readers who are coming back with feedback that say, man, it reminds me of my family. I didn't grow up in Kentucky, but I had those exact same experiences. Or I have people who say, oh, it's all about family. And I have other people who say, oh, it's all about Australia. So it, depending on how you read the book and what your perspective is, it means different things to different people. You use the word queepy, and I'm going to spell it, Q-W-E-E-P-I-E. What is it, and where does it come from? Well, this story was actually inspired and is about my hometown of Dawson Springs, Kentucky. So inside the town, there are many people, and there are many names that are used inside the book. So I had to pick two names that have probably never lived in that town. <laughs> <laughs> so one was queepy, <laughs> and the other one is Drew's cousins and aunts. And they are actually called haters, H-A-Y-D-E-R-S. And the reason I chose those two names was Queepy gives you a sense of, Queepy gives you an idea that Drew might be kind of scary. And haters give you an idea that that family might not be so nice, or they may be uh, someone you wouldn't want to hang out with. <laughs> and I set up those names so that no one in the town would say, oh, you're talking about this person or you're talking about that person. Because I have 18 aunts and uncles, and if they read this book, they're going to think it's all about them. <laughs> wow. Uh, is it safe for you to go back home? <laughs> <laughs> it's always safe to go home. But this book is not about any one person or any one family. It's just so family-oriented that it could happen in almost any family. And that's the thing about this book is I wanted it to be something that a son could say, hey, dad, you should read this because it reminds me of you. Or, hey, mom, you should read this because it reminds me of aunt so-and-so. And that way, when the kids are reading it, they're actually getting the parents to get involved in the reading. And I also added the Australian vocabulary because I am actually using the Australian vocabulary in my house. And my kids are saying, well, what does that mean? And they're learning a totally different vocabulary, and they haven't even read the book yet. So if this book makes me do that, it's going to make other families do the same thing. And it's going to build a bond between the family because it, this book is just creepy enough that you might get scared, but it's not so creepy that you couldn't share it with any family member. You mentioned that Outback is going to be part of an eight-book series. Is this one the first, and are the same characters going to follow through in all eight books? The same characters will follow through in all eight books. The first four books are set up so you get to know Drew's bothers and sinisters. So Drew's siblings have always called him their little bother instead of their little brother. <laughs> so he calls his brothers and sisters his big bother and his big sinisters because he has an older sinister who is the big sinister and then he also has a little sinister his second sister <laughs> <laughs> well i was gonna ask if this was some kind of secret language that little boys used is this something that you came up with or is it something that actually happened in your life well my cousin who actually came to my house when i was probably about 36 years old she said hey hey mark how about you write this story called Bothers and Sinisters? You know how we used to call each other Little Bother and Big Bother and, you know, Sisters or Sinister? She said, why not do that? And I told her if she would write it, I would illustrate it. And she said, I'm not writing that. She said, you write it and you, it's all yours. <laughs> so I mulled over this for about four years and I couldn't get it out of my head. So I started to write this book and I always write in a timeline. And the reason I write in a timeline is because certain things need to happen in people's lives at a certain point 
to make it dynamic. I know there are things that happen in my life that people go, wow, that's incredible. I'm like, I know that that's like a turning point. So I see my life as a timeline. So I write in timelines. And that's why this book is eight books long, because I started it with Drew's experiences with his bothers and sinisters. And it actually stems from before he was born. So inside the book, the first four books, the first one is about his relationship with his oldest sinister. Her name is Calliope, and her name is misspelled. All of the characters' names are misspelled. Uh, Calliope is K-I-L-L-I-O-P-E, and she gives looks that could kill. So inside this book, it's his relationship with Calliope. The second book will be his relationship with Pester, his oldest brother. And then we have the third book, which will be the relationship with his other brother, Payne, and then his other sister. Her name is Gail. What is the primary message you want to share with readers of Outback? I think readers should read Outback to have a better understanding of how their siblings see them and how they should see their siblings. I know growing up in a household of four brothers and sisters, we had the same parents, but we all had an exact, totally different experience. So when I was talking about an event, my brother would see it totally different. And my two sisters would see the same event. It, it would be four different perspectives. And it's really important to understand, one, who your siblings are, and two, the perspective that they see their life. Most people talk about a fi- family dynamic where the oldest sibling is the most responsible. Well, from the day we're born as an oldest sibling, we are having to watch out for our little brothers and sisters. And there is a hierarchy in your family, and that kind of does change your perspective in the relationships of your family. So that's what I want people to understand in Fathers and Sinisters, the Outback, is your life is not always the way you see it. Boy, can I relate to that one. (laughs) (laughs) So please share with us some of the awards you've won for your books. I have illustrated over 40 picture books. They have won over 50 different picture book awards. They have ranged from awards for publishing, awards for illustration, awards for writing. They range Reader's Favorite, Florida Authors and Publishers Association, FAPA President's Awards, Ippy Awards, Ben Franklin, Moonbeam, Eric Hoffer. The list is so long, I almost don't like to show it to people. (laughs) (laughs) But it's funny because when you write and you illustrate you're not doing it for the award. You're doing it for one reader. And a good example of Outback is we do our own book distribution. So I'm at the post office almost every other day. And inside the post office, we have one postal worker that he's not always the friendliest. And (laughs) when I told him that I had written this book, he said, oh, yeah, where can I get a copy? I said, right here. I took one of the copies out and I said, here, take it. About two weeks later, I come in, and he goes, oh, my gosh, that was so incredible. He said, all right, so now tell me about Drew. Here's this person that for eight years has only said anything liquid, fragile, perishable to me. That's all he's ever said. He said, wow, that's incredible. Tell me more about Drew. Okay. (laughs) And one of my favorite things he said before I left, he goes, hey, I used that comment about friends and underwear that that drew used and i said oh my gosh he's even quoting the book (laughs) you've made a friend for life there (laughs) and that's why you write Uh uh-huh that's why you write that's why you illustrate you write to affect a reader and it's not your parents (laughs) you know my dad probably will never read this which he probably should he'll probably laugh but it's not about them it's about those people that that are like you that want to live in the worlds you want to live in and the way that you change their lives. And since then, I have seen him numerous times. He continues to ask questions. His daughter is in a school for literature. He's putting me in connections with his daughter. A totally different experience, all because of 35,000 words. Well, Mark, you're a big supporter of children's reading programs. Will you please share a little bit about that with us? Yes, literacy for me, I see probably anywhere from 45,000 to 90,000 students every year. And I usually do not read a story to them. 
And the reason I do not read the stories to them is because they usually will read them in school before I arrive because I usually send copies. I actually inspire them to go and search out more information. For example, when I was a kid, I lived in Dawson Springs, Kentucky, which is also in the Outback book. There was only a library, and that was my only out from Dawson Springs, Kentucky. There were 2,500 people, and I would travel all over the world through the books. And the thing that was most important to me was being inspired to find the book. So when I go to elementary schools, I will talk about writing an illustration, and I will tell them stories. For example, um, I would ask my mom how to draw, and she would tell me 741.5. And people will say, well, what does that mean? I said, well, 741.5, isn't it obvious? If you want to draw a car, that's how you draw a car. And my mom was a librarian. Anytime I asked her a question, she would give me a number. <laughs> isn't that funny? I know where that's going. <laughs> so it was a call number in the library. So I would act, that's how my mom inspired me to read. So when kids will ask me, how did you learn to draw like that? I will say 741.5. <laughs> It's amazing that those numbers have stuck with you all these years. <laughs> and the most important thing is if you love a certain section of the library, you will probably read it from the time you were eight years old until you are on your deathbed uh -huh. because that's who you are. And I learned that my two favorite sections in the library were picture books and drawing books. And my life for years, I kept wondering, oh, what should I do? You know, I was art director for an architectural sign company. I've worked for Disney, SeaWorld, managed a printing company. I had so much experience and people would say, what do you want to do? I, I would say, I don't know. But I bumped into a publisher and I started to illustrate children's books. And in eight years, I illustrated over 40 picture books. And once you find your passion and you will just grow exponentially. And my passion has always been because of the library two favorite sections. So when I talk to kids, I always tell them about one of my teachers. Anytime I would say it wasn't going to happen, for example, I didn't know any authors or any illustrators. So he told me, hey, there's this book in the library about this guy named Walt Disney. If you read that, <laughs> you'll know an artist. So I went and read the book. And then I came back to my class and I said, you know what? I don't draw like Walt Disney. I'll never be an artist. My teacher laughs at me and he says, did you know there's a book in the library about how to draw any one of Walt Disney's <laughs> characters? <laughs> so my entire life has been about these people who didn't even go and hand me the book. They didn't do anything other than say 741.5 and there's a book in the library. If that's what you want, go get it. And that's what I talk about in schools. It's not the teacher's responsibility. It's the reader's responsibility. And if you want something, it's right there in front of you. Just go get it. So it, that's the most important message that anyone can learn in life. If, if you want it, it's right there for you. It's up to you to go get it. What a phenomenal message. So, Mark, where can we learn more about you, about your other books? And most of all, where can we purchase Outback, Fathers and Sinisters? If you would like a signed copy of Outback, you can come to my website at www.markwayneadams.com, -E or you can come to our company website, which is mwa.company. And if you need this book from Barnes & Noble, Kindle, any other reading format, you can find it anywhere you want. It's not in the 741.5 section, though. <laughs> Mark, it's been so delightful talking with you today. Thank you so much for sharing Outback Bothers and Sinisters with us. I do hope you'll come back and chat with us again when you release the next in the series. I will definitely come back and chat with you guys. I want to close today's show with a review, one from a retired English teacher and librarian. She says, Outback is a book of magic and adventure that young readers will not soon forget. Adam's characters amuse, frustrate, intrigue, and redeem us. Most importantly, Outback teaches us the wisdom of family, roots, home, all of which make their own kind of magic in our everyday lives. That is the reason enough for me to recommend Outback. And so if you were a parent, 
a grandparent, please consider sharing Outback with all of the youngsters in your life. This is Linda Thompson, concluding another edition of The Author Show. Please share this interview with your family and friends so that they, too, may have the opportunity to discover our guest and his work. And why not spread the word on social media as well? Please join us next time for another exciting author and another great book on The Author Show. Thanks for listening to The Author Show. To contact us, call toll-free 1-877-955-8800. That's 877-55-8800. Or visit theauthorshow.com, theauthorshow.com. Tune in next time to another great author on The Author Show.